Hey, hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to paint this gnome that we uh, had carved in a previous video. And so we're going to uh, get this guy painted and uh, sealed today and uh, hopefully that you'll follow along. And uh, we'll have the list of paints in the description uh, later in the video. All right, let's get our uh, let's get started today. I always start with the flesh. And um, I, again, if you watched the painting video back a while back about how I mix, uh, I always start using my uh, very thin water colors and acrylic colors. And I'm coming in with uh, a round brush. Whatever brush fits you, fits the carving, use it the best that you can. And again, we're just coming in here using the flesh color. Shake up your bottle really good. Make sure your, your uh, brushes are good and clean. And always uh, turn your carvings to where you can see what you're doing. And because it will tell on you later on if you don't get to all these little areas. Now since we're not, we're just going, we didn't carve no eyes on this guy. We're just going to use uh, paints today for the eye. And uh, we're going to give him some nice colors today, spring colors. Okay, so you see him there, he's he's got a little bit of flesh, maybe hard to see on the camera, but anyway, we'll let that dry. We may revisit this area here, but now we're going to come down here with the, with the uh, brush and hit the lip. And if you get a little bit on the tongue, so what? We're going to go in there with some tomato spice and make that tongue uh, pop here after a while. Okay, when you feel like you've got the, the face covered with the flesh paint while well, I rinse your brush. And uh, now we're going to come in here with some, oh, let's, we're going to take yellow okra and we're going to paint his boots yellow okra today. And, uh, or his shoes, whatever you, whatever you decide to, you carve, shoes or boots. And this kind of breaks it up, kind of something different. You know, gnomes are kind of unique in little characters. I looked up the word gnome the other day and it means actual height. And it's like, that's kind of an unusual description. But anyway, I was trying to do some research. And so any subject to your carving, you should try to look up as much research as you can on it. And we're coming right around here. Keep the brush moving. Don't let it uh, stay in one spot very long. Get right in here and get all these little places. Now what I did off camera before we started, I took my knife and I went around all these places where we're going to have different colors that would meet and uh, that way they want to hopefully bleed on one another uh, because then you have to stop and clean up all that. So always kind of go around your carving with your knife and make those stop cuts. That way the paint will go right down into that stop cut instead of on a part of the carving you don't want your paint to go to. Okay, you say, well, Van, that looks pretty light. You know, that's what we're wanting because you can always add uh, to your uh, add color more in layers. All right, and now we're going to go to, uh, let's go to the overhauls. And this will be, I'm using navy blue uh, for this particular uh, project here. Again, this is going to be a little darker color. And you're going to get some paint on areas you don't need to, but it's all right. You can um, take your knife and just remove all that stuff in there if you can. And I use a circular motion. I, use, I go right to left, counterclockwise and clockwise. Clockwise and counterclockwise. And keep that brush moving. Right down in there, next to the pants, with the top of the shoes. 
and you know he's been out running in the woods and stuff so his shoes aren't going to be perfectly shiny and new right out of the store so you may we may darken those shoes up a little later on Then when we get done with this guy, we will dip him in the boil in seed oil solution that we showed you a while back to preserve your painting. And also too, acrylics has a tendency to look very chalky. And uh, so the boil in seed oil really makes your carving, your painting look very rich and very nice and soft tones and just keep that brush moving all right now i'm going to come right in here now we're going to do start doing the straps plant your finger where you can to give you stability just like you would when you were carving Give you better control. Again, just take your time. Now, some of the wood, when you carve on wood, it's Every piece is going to be different, and some when you open up the grains of the wood with your with your knife or whatever tool you're using to carve your project with, it's going to open up the grain, and, and when you start to paint, some areas are going to be lighter, and some areas are going to be darker. So don't don't fret about that. That's just part of the process, and that's why you go back over it uh, with your paintbrush and hit these areas. And again, too, you know uh, his overhauls or pants or are going to be a little bit faded because he works in them every day just like us so all right so we're going to let that as you can see here now we'll stop and kind of look him over and that way you can see and uh, now we're going to do uh, buttercream here or he can be an older looking gnome and so we're going to uh, let this dry for a second here and then we're going to get right into the, the hat. Now we're going to use uh, deep burgundy for his hat. And again, you can change the hat color up, make it you know yellow or red or blues or whatever. All right, so we're going to remember when you're dipping your brush, don't dip the whole thing. Just dip the you know about middle ways or a little bit of the brush. Don't dip the whole thing. Now again, when we put these wrinkles on the hat, isn't that, isn't that nice looking there? And how that just gives it some depth there and, and on your carving. Again, just keep things moving. Now I'm gonna get right in here. I'm gonna try to get underneath the hat there. in these places here. I'm just taking them using that top of that hat as setting that hat on top of the table here and using it just spinning it around. That gives me more stability. Yep, there we go. Had a little hair, had a little red to his hair. Anyway, we can carve that off. No big deal. Well, you can see here the grain. It's neat how the, the camera can pick that up and, and uh, the grain is running this away and it's just and then when you take your knife and you made these wrinkles it just really makes all this pop and really makes a nice looking carving 
Oh boy, he's coming to life. I'm liking that. That, that deep burgundy is really absorbing in there and really showing the, the grain and also the wrinkles. And then when we do the dry brushing after a while, show the highlights. All right, I'm going to uh, have to get my knife here and um, take off that little bit of red there that we got on his hair. And um, But while we're getting that knife, we're going to do the shirt. Let's do a brown shirt. Uh, good old brown shirt. Rinse our brush in between the straps here. Now, if you want to, you can do a white shirt, any color you like. He's your gnome. You, you, you paint him however you like. But uh, So now we're going to come in here and hit these areas here. Try to get up here where I can see better myself. And sometimes your wood's going to really absorb your paints. And you may have to revisit that area over again. But have fun painting this guy. Don't stress out about painting. It's just a piece of wood. And, uh, you know, it's just... It should be fun. All right, now we're going to come in here and see a little bit right in the edge here of his shirt that we need to get and his elbow. And sometime down the road, I'll show you how to put patches on shirts and jeans. And again, that just adds more realism and more uh, character to your piece. Uh, whether it's a patch on a woman's apron or a patch on his knee, and whatever so that will be down the road a ways we can do that okay we're gonna let the this shirt dry here now we're gonna take our knife here and we're gonna come in and we're going to remove that slip of the brush. Okay, so we've removed a little bit of that red paint there. And so when you're getting ready to do the beard here, I'm, I'm going to come in and remove some of this paint that got on the beard underneath. Because we're going to use buttercream and a little bit more thicker consistency than our regular paints that we use when we really water those down. All right, so I see here that we're just about ready. So I'm gonna bring in the paint tray here that's got some uh, buttercream on it. And um, we're going to uh, get our brush pretty wet. And then we're just gonna come in here and start bringing in this buttercream. And again, you may have to do this, you know, three or four times, let it dry in between and to get the desired color and that you like. So if you like it really light, then leave it as is. All right, let's continue to turn here. And keep this brush wet and keep it moving. Now this one here, I did not carve the locks of hair, we just carved in different depths in the beard to break up the beard. And so I, I kind of like doing that once in a while. Again, keep your brush moving. You can see it's pretty watery and that's fine. I'd rather start out light than start out dark because then you'd have to have a hard time removing the darkness off but so you can always start out light and you can always go darker then we're going to show some um, to the cheeks after a while we're going to use orange poppy uh, to highlight his cheeks give it some highlight there again just Make every stroke count here as you're painting. Planting my little 
finger where I can get control. Gives me better stability. Just make sure wherever you put your finger, it's, it's good and dry. Possible. Okay, now we're going to try to get underneath the, the beard here a little bit. Or underneath the hair back here along the shirt line. Just taking your time. Let the brush do the work. Now again, you may have to go over this two or three more times to get the beard covered good underneath here. Dab a little bit more paint there. Come underneath here. And just keep that brush moving. And using that little thumb for placement there for stability. If you're needing to make a carving dry quicker, if you're doing quite a few in a row, uh, if you're a production carver, I'd recommend you get an old used hair dryer um, and or they're pretty cheap nowadays. You can get them at your local stores, but it just is a great way to uh, dry your paints quicker. If you've got a lot of carvings lined up on the bench and you're painting quite a few at a time, like I do, I use a hair dryer and it gets me the results quicker where I can get on down the road. Okay, so let's kind of stop and look at him for a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm liking him. Hope you are too. All right, so I'm going to come back in here and visit these areas that needs a little touch up. Right in here. All right. See an area right in here, it's going to really open up a little bit. And so I need to come in here and really opened up there and I need to hit that area. And using that little finger for stability. So now if you've got a dark collar that you really need to cover up, go pretty straight put my little finger on his nose there and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just add a little more thick. See how I covered up that blue there? And that's what you kind of need to do is just come back and revisit that with a little thicker paint of the color. Whatever it is that you're using. And uh, let that dry. You may have to go back and revisit that again. I'm going to use my blower myself, try to blow some of that, dry that on there a little bit. Okay, let's stop here a second and let's look him over and see where we need to get more paint on or less paint on. All right, as you're looking at him, turn him just like when you're carving, turn him upside down every which way you can, and that way you can see anything that uh, you might need to revisit. And I really don't see much that we need to revisit right now, so we're going to let that paint dry there a little bit before we move on because we are going to get ready to do the tongue next, and we're going to use a tomato spice there. Remember that the bowl linseed oil we're going to dip him in is really going to make him pop. And so don't get too crazy putting too much, too much paint on your project, okay? Because you want to be able to see the grain of the wood, and that's the key part of this. All right, so now we're going to take a smaller brush, and um, we're going to come in, and we're going to do uh, a tomato spice uh, for uh, this lip here or for the tongue because he's got a little bit of a tongue in there and I'm using an angle brush here but you can use a little um, a little liner brush and come in and just hit that area right in there 
Just let that sit there and soak a little bit. A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, right? Get the top of his lip there a little bit, but we'll take care of that by using water to get rid of that. Here we go. And plus two, our orange poppy is going to take care of that also. All right, now I'm going to come in with our round brush and I'm going to lightly hit his his lower lip a little bit there. Now remember, your tongue is darker than your lips are, so I'm going to revisit that tongue with a little more thicker paint after a while, if I don't forget. And that way there shows a distinction between the lip and the, and the tongue there. All right, good, good, good. Now we're going to gonna have to set him down there and I want to get the um, stylus out. We're getting ready to put some eyes in and we're just going to get some navy blue here or whatever color you'd like to get. And uh, you don't need much because his eye placement here is hardly anything to it. It's just a little dot there. And so what I do here is I take my stylus or toothpick in the toothpick and I just dip the tip of that in there and I try it out on paper first if I like that look. So, yep, okay, that's going to work. All right, so again, plant your little, now look at that paint on my finger. So make sure that's good and dry before you plant that thing somewhere. All right, so we're going to come in and put a little dot right here. And remember, breathe and relax. Okay. Come in and visit that again. All right, good. I'm liking that. Let's come over, jump across the bridge of the nose, and come over here. And there we have two little eyes there. Yeah, so now we got to let that dry before we put a highlight of white. And we're going to use a lot smaller end of the stylus because you don't want that gleam to overpower the actual uh, color of the, of the blue. All right, so we're going to let that dry for a second. All right, so now we're going to put in the, um, the eyebrows. And this is a liner brush, and um, it's... it's it's about a not a, I don't know what it is, just a liner brush. So what I do is I come in and I twist and I'm trying to round, just get enough paint on there. And I twist and turn to get all, make sure the paint's all over that. And then I come over here and I test it to see, there we go. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do our very best here. And uh, we need to uh, come in here and and uh, we'll just try to put a hint that there is an eyebrow there. All right, revisit my paint again. Because you're using very little paint here. Ta-da! There he is, hopefully. And then I'm going to re revisit here again. All right, good. Oh, that really helped him. Can you see that there, folks? There you are. Yeah. Now, this is really what's going to make him his eyes uh, come to life. And that is going, and I use um, a white, a snow white. And But again, whatever white paint brand that you have it will work perfectly. Um, and so we don't need much. You can even use the even, sometimes if you just need a little bit, you can always use just the, just the tap a little bit of that right there using the inside of the lid. If you just need to use a little bit of white, a little bit of paint, you don't need a whole lot. All right, so we're going to come in here and we're going to hopefully remember to breathe and just relax. OK, 
Okay, and put one on the same side. Okay, we need to revisit that again. All right. Well, let's come over here. I tell you what we're going to. I want to show you something that happens whenever this happens. When I feel like this has gone, um, the piece here, the the uh, the white over it overtook the the blue. Uh, because I'm not very steady when it comes to doing small things like this. But anyway, we're going to revisit this eye. And we're going to re-paint that eye and go, come right over. And you know what? We're going to make his eyes. There you go. See how that took care of that? Now let that dry. And then come back and visit that with your white paint with a glean. And make sure you get the gleans on the same side of the eye. You don't want to look cross-eyed. Okay, we got him dried. And so we're going to come in and revisit the glean. Ah, oh, there we go. There we are. That's what we were looking for. And so now that just brings him to life. All right, so we're going to set him down here for a little bit. We're going to change horses here a little bit and go to our orange poppy to create the rosy or rosy cheeks in a way we're going to get our brush really wet and what i'm going to do here is kind of bring some of this over here where you can see here on the table and this is an orange poppy and i really thin it out i load my brush up pretty good and then i just kind of test it out here to see if i like the consistency and so all right I like that. So we're going to come in here and just hit these areas. Now I, I can I sometimes I go over the whole face, but then when it dry, I don't go very um, dark here, but only around the cheek area. So we're just going to blend this in a little bit here, just to show a hint that he's been outside a little bit in the sunshine. And it just helps break up the face from the flesh color. All right, we're going to turn him over or under. Or we can get underneath the nose. Cheeks. And we're going to put a, just a little bit of it on the upper lip area. Right through there. Okay. Now again, we're going to have to let that dry a little bit. Then I'm going to come in here with a little thicker and, and then hit these areas right in here, the cheeks. I don't want them to look like an, an orange, so we've got to be careful that we don't put too much on here. Hit the nose a little bit here. Hit the cheeks. And like that there. Now I'm going a little darker. And I need to blend that in. You just don't want that to look like there's a ridge there where it quit. Just blend it in. Blend it in. Blend it in. Okay, good. All right, now we're going to do some dry brushing. And we're about to uh, complete this project. And again, I use a stylus brush. You can get it at your local um, craft place, store. And then what I do is that I come in and I just dip the very tip of that in. I don't dip the whole thing. And then I come in here and I dab, dab, dab until it's almost gone. See, it's almost faded away. And then I'm going to come in here 
and hit these areas like so. And this just gives him a different look, and I like it. Now don't get too crazy with it. And then come in here. Now see, I haven't revisited that brush in the paint yet. I'm giving the jeans here and the overhauls. I this breaks up the color scheme here. See there how it made the difference in the color of the jeans? So come back in here a little bit with your weight and dab, dab, dab. Now if you don't like this process, that's fine. Just leave your carving as is. But um, I have a lot of people who do like this type of technique. And it just shows you your wrinkles and your carving with the carving tools went in and made the cuts on your on your piece. It just really brings it to life. Now I'm going to put a little bit here on his shoe just to kind of break the shoes up to give it some highlights also. All right. And you know, break up that too. Break up the face a little bit. It might be a little frosty out there where he's at. Who knows? <laughs> All right. And now I want to come in, and like I said, I want to revisit this mouth here and make it a little darker, the tongue. I'm just taking my liner brush and Whatever brush will fit in there if you have. All right. Okay. Well, I think he's done far as painting wise. And now our next step we're going to do is bring in the dipping bucket. And we're going to dip this guy. And you'll see how uh, dry and, and chalky he looks. And But the uh, boiled linseed oil will really bring him to life. All right. So, folks, we're getting ready to dip uh, this little gnome. And remember, we're a mixture here of boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits, and about a half inch of burnt umber oil paint. So you mix this up really good into whatever uh, you know, a bottle or bucket that you'd like to. And so just test it out on and see how you like the consistency. All right, so he is done. He's dry and ready to go. And you could again, I want you to see, I'm going to try to dip half of him and just, just show you the difference uh, from not dipping to dipping, all right? Doesn't matter how you go in, you just put them in. And we're gonna go right about there and just show you, hopefully, the difference here. And so now we're just gonna take the rest of him and just dip him. And now we're gonna get the excess off and I'm gonna push this box over Get rid, try to get as much of the excess off of him you possibly can. All right, so now I'm going to take my box here and shove him over and uh, shove the box over and I'm going to put him right here on the table. And, uh, and again, remember when you get done with your rags, soak them in water or put them in a uh, sealed bucket. That way they do not combust on you. Uh, so, again, you don't want a, a fire. And so, anyway, so you just take now and you just let him sit there for a little bit. And I let him, and I flip him over and let the excess run off onto the paper towels. And just let him sit there for a little bit. And then get you a good clean paper towel. And then come in. <clears throat> don't rub, but dab the excess off, all right? And let him sit for about 24 hours because the smell, if you put him in somewhere where it's enclosed, you're going to smell him. Um, so make sure, do this in a well-ventilated area. And again, when he completely dries, when there's, it's not tacky or anything. If you want to, you can go with a, a semi-gloss 
I wouldn't go glossy. I don't like things looking like plastic. I want you to be able to see the wood grains and the paint and how well the job you did. And you've done a good job of painting here. And so you just go in here and just dab off all this excess. And he is ready to go pretty much here. And so when you feel like you've got the most of it off, again, remember to dispose of your rags or paper towels correctly. And hopefully this has been a fun project for you. And uh, hopefully that this will be an encouragement to you beginners that even uh, us that's been painting a while in the carbon while we still have our ups and down days and getting things right. So anyway, thank you for joining us today and we look forward to hearing your comments. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell and we'll look forward to seeing you real soon.